You hit the jackpot today. The great Dan Gerhardt is with us live. Hey, Dan. Hey, Eric. Welcome. Not sure about that introduction, but thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored to have you here, and and it's nice to reconnect and to see you. And to we were chatting a little bit about our lives in coronavirus times before all this happened. So, or as since this all happened. So, um, so Dan, uh, what are you going to do today? What are you going to show us? I am going to be doing a drawing of our daughter, Sion. And let me just give you a quick glimpse of um, this beautiful little lady here. Hi, Sion. Say hello, Sion. Hi. Wave your hands. <laughs> Say hi to everybody. Sion, there are people watching you from all over the world. All over the world. And maybe, maybe thousands and thousands of them. Okay? No pressure, huh? She, Sion is as beautiful inside as she is out. She's an absolute. And she is so gem. chill. She's like, that's okay. I don't mind thousands of people watching. <laughs> She's used to it. Yeah. Okay. And then, would you be willing also today, before we wrap up, to give us a little studio tour, um, may, maybe towards the end? Be happy to. Yeah, because it looks like a really terrific studio. I've never seen it in person, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, so I'm going to drop you out for a second. I'll make a couple of announcements, and we'll be right back. And you you can get your camera set up, and and uh, we'll be ready to roll. So, Dan, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put you on camera and let you get started. All right? Sounds great. Hey, folks, I am excited to share with you today. I uh, like I showed I shared with you Sion. Um, Sion has modeled for me quite a bit this last year. It's been it's been. Uh, great to work with her. She's got such a beautiful spirit. And to try to capture that in various mediums, um, in various subject subjects. So today we're going to do a charcoal drawing. I am going to be speaking on um, certainly, you know, all the aspects of drawing, but really kind of honing in on edges. I just spent the last several months developing a course um, specifically on edges and I'm really um, excited to share that with you guys as well but today we're uh, going to work with Sion and I am going to just begin um, also uh, what I will be presenting to you at Realism Live touches on all the aspects of painting and uh, pretty much everything that I'm that I deal with my thought process so I hope you can join me there as well so let's get started I am just using um, various hardnesses of uh, the nitram charcoal. I've got a kneaded eraser. This is just a piece of uh, Canson 100% um, acid-free um, paper, a little piece of Conti white that I may use to heighten some areas if I get to that. But in the meantime, let's get started. All right, Sion, where are we here? That's great. You know, one thing working with a live model, you have to make sure in setting up the pose, um, I don't start unless I feel that that trigger in my soul where you're you're moving the model around, you're looking at it from different angles, whether it be a still life or a landscape or a, a painting, all of it's the same. So wait until you you see that rhythm. It could be a contrast of edge a razor sharp edge against a really soft edge. Maybe that, what you could do is shift your camera just a little so we sure. can see while you're posing her. That's a great idea, Eric. Okay, here we go. So Sion, take your pose there, Sue. Okay, so yeah, so what I love about what I'm seeing on Sion here is right now her eye socket creates this, this beautiful soft transition against this razor sharp edge here. I absolutely love just the simple line of her, her head. You know, the, that compared to that, it's just this upside down teardrop that's just gorgeous. And what I was trying to say earlier is allow yourself to be completely blown away by the beauty and then let that carry the process. Um, you know, personally, I know that somebody created this and I lift my hands or my heart or I say thank you. This something 
to acknowledge that this is not of me, that it is a gift and that we are stewards to share it. And what a responsibility, what a privilege. So um, all that is, you know, a good place to start. So let's let's get rolling here. So I've got Sion on camera. You can see the drawing. I think if Eric, if, let me know if I need to change anything. I appreciate the heads up before. So, okay, Sion, spin your head my way just a little bit. There you go, honey. Thanks. Okay. All right. So here we are. You know, where do I start? When I whenever I start a painting or a drawing, with a painting, I normally start with charcoal as well. But you know, it's just the simple line, the simple. Remember, I mentioned that that gorgeous teardrop shape. That's what I'm keying into right now. Just this. I'm starting with this. I'm not starting with the eyes. You know, some people. You know, I should say that. You know, there are as many ways to start a painting or a drawing as there are human beings. Really, I tend to like to do it this way. This is not the way I, you know, that everybody has to do it. This is the way that my brain processes the information the best. I'm simply sharing what works well for me. So uh, let's get back here again. So I'm sorry about all the jiggling around here, folks. Okay, so here we go again. So, um, yes, back to uh, spin your head in my way. Just a t there you go, on great. Okay, so squinting down. When I do this, okay, so there's a, I tend to use straight lines instead of curves. This gives a little bit more strength to the form. Squinting down, jaw, you know, so if this is the whole head, the, Bun of her hair is up in here. Now, I tend to find the next most obvious breakdown. That would be her hairline, which comes, her forehead goes through here. Her hairline is up there. Notice how high that is. And then, um, spin your face my way again, hon. A little bit more. Right there. Good. You know, the model is going to adjust. They have no idea if their head is, you know, here or here or there or there you it is our job to make sure they are in the exact position every time i look up there and that means reminding them regularly gently with compassion and kindness to say you know this is oh sweetie you, you moved again or um whatever it might be you know so so because you know they they've got no clue if they've moved a quarter inch so continuing on, uh, let's see. So I've broken it down. Here's the, the initial teardrop I started with. Here's the braid as it comes across the top of her head and goes up into here and then this cuts into there. And now I've, I'm left with this shape. What? Where can I find the next obvious breakdown? Now I'm looking at, at this shape, the shape of her forehead. Again, even though this appears to be a very smooth curve, I am choosing to use a series of straight lines instead of curves. Again, if you look at all of Sargent's work or Bouguereau, you know, the softest, most beautiful figures and forms are always made with a series of straight lines. I should mention also that I am squinting um, down with every decision, squinting down, simplifying the forms. So notice how far down the, the eyes are compared to the whole head. That's an easy miss. A lot of times when I'm teaching people, I find that they have a tendency, they want to put the eyes up in here someplace. Well, wow, when I when I look here to there and then break this down and then from this point to there, it's it's just a matter of the breaking it down into the simplest, most abstract shapes possible. Doing a super job, Zion. Uh, 
her nose too low. It's all right. Fix it. You know, and you if you find you've, you've done an error, clean it off. Get it straightened out as soon as you can. In the process, it helps everything to um, not have that error remain on your can uh, canvas or, or paper um, so that you don't, it doesn't throw off your other decisions. Chin up, just a touch, honey, right there. Thank you. Okay, so really, you know, so it's always a battle when you're painting or drawing. When you get when you're getting into the features, it's a ten, you have a tendency to kind of become myopic and miss the big picture. So as I am squinting at Sion, I am uh, making sure that all the while I'm looking at these little parts, I'm also pulling back in my mind and physically stepping back a few feet to see where how this all fits together. Whoopsie. So, I'm gonna simplify this down a little bit. Again, squinting way down. There is um, this razor sharp edge right through here. Whenever I am painting or drawing, it is important as early on in the process as possible to establish your extremes of value and of edge. So the darkest darks will be up through here, into here. This edge back here is softer. So why not, even right now, soften that out as I'm putting it in? Doing a great job, Sion. So squinting down, earlier on I, I mentioned that we have this um, really great contrast between sharp edge here and the soft melting forms as the eye, the eye ball and, and socket kind of melt into this shadow shape and it just creates this really beautiful, uh, chin up a little, honey, spin your head my way right there. Good, good, good. Thank you. So there's a sharp edge on the bottom of her nose. It's soft. Taking a measurement from the this point to the eye, where does that fall? Again, this this shape and this form just this is a gorgeous soft transition that's what i saw initially that really got me um really uh, that i found very beautiful and i that's this is kind of the, the message right through here for me this gorgeous soft transition compared to the sharpness outside here and um you know it doesn't have to be the the like i said the message it doesn't have to be a social statement. It doesn't have to be, I mean, it can be, but in this case, just the beauty of this edge, this soft transition compared to this edge, to me, you know, that's enough. That's enough. What, what, and then I have to just trust that and then put that out there. I was given that for a reason, um, you know, that sensation that, that, that 
heart, my, the heart, my heartstrings were, you know, moved at that point, and and then I have to trust that, and then and then put that down. I guess what I've what I'm trying to say is, in the years that I've been doing this. When I have been at shows or people have expressed to me how my work has moved them, thankfully over the years, those are the things that I hear. You know, they 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 respond in ways that that confirm kind of what I just said. That you know, there is there is a there's a narrative. The you know the, the overarching narrative is you know, here's a portrait of a beautiful young lady. Yes, but within that we have all the other narrative of the line and the form, in this case, not the color, but the the edge and the rhythm and the and the the juxtaposition of of you know this angle to that angle, and how does it all work together, and how does it um, all of that will work to move someone's soul. It's certainly moving mine, and my job as a visual artist now is to capture that and put it out there. That's that's what we're doing here, folks. That's, I believe, why we've been given this gift. Not as a, you know, I'm certainly it's it's meditative, it's 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 soothing and healing for our souls as well. But there's an aspect of, of just sharing, and um, you know, this will live. These pieces that we all do will live well beyond our lives, and you know, they will continue to touch people and so you know how does that all how does that all work out so I think that stuff's going through my mind all the while I am working on on this stuff so let me just take a see do you need a stretch yeah just take a little stretch I okay think we all ought to give her some applause she's doing a terrific job You're very welcome. See the sweetie. I, you know, Sion, I can't get my own daughter to model for me, so your dad must be paying you a lot of money or something. <laughs> well, we we work together here, so well, that's nice. nice. Dan, we have uh, people watching from Malaysia, from South Africa, uh, Egypt, uh, wow, Saudi you. Arabia, and of course, all throughout the United States. So. Um, Thank you very much. So far, no questions, but a lot of a lot of comments about how moved they are. So, uh, Bangalore, ah, good. All right. So, Thank you. Thank you, folks. Let's hold us watching, Dan. Excellent. You guys, I should I should tell you that Dan's going to be launching a, a new course, and you can find his information uh, once it's out at his website, which is, uh, let's see. I'm not seeing it here. Is it danielgerharts.com? That's correct. Yep. They okay. will be able to find what they need there. So anyway, uh, thank you for mentioning that, Eric. I am uh, developing a, uh, a series of three. The first one to be released is on edges and I'll be, um, and then values and then color temperature and how to understand color temperature and how to oh, use wow. it. So, so all those three, um, because as I've taught, it seems like there's, you know, when we're when we're beginning to learn, beginning to paint, there's there's so many balls to juggle, and um, you tend to drop most of them at the beginning. But I thought in isolating each aspect with a teaching course of its own, and then we can, you know, we can put it all together in the end. So that's kind of what what the the emphasis is, and Great idea. I'm anxious to share that with you guys coming Great up. Idea. So when is that coming? That will be available in about two weeks. So oh, keep your eyes um, open on our website. And All you'll right. find what uh, you need to, to okay. know. So and thank I have you. the website on the screen, so you guys. All right, Dan, I'm going to get off and let you. Thank you. Again. All righty. All right, Sam, you ready? <clears throat> I want to get this set up again so you can see her as well. There we go. Okay, good. Yeah, there we go. Okay, ready, Sam? Hard to hold a pose like that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, she's she's doing a good job. All right, I think we're ready here. That's perfect, Sion. Excellent. 
Okay, you know, bricks are great. Um, they, they give me a chance to get back. Now I'm seeing the thing with a completely fresh eye. Um, what what's needs to be addressed at this point? Where, where am I? What's got to happen? You know, one thing I want to do is kind of just re reestablish the strength of just the simple, simple teardrop that I talked about early on. Okay. Okay, get that. Too low, I did that again, second time in a row. It's all right, fix it. You notice, again, and notice an error. Get in there right away and just fix it. I am squinting all the while here. Simple, simple, simple. Keeping things as simply stated as I possibly can here. The, 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 there's a shadow line on her jaw right here. But it so softly rolls. The, the fall of light on the light side of her face is creating the light side right here to be darker than what it is up here. But this is technically still in the light on this side. So what I'm going to do, this, this all spins around. This, you know, this, this is a sphere. Her face is a sphere right here. And then her jawline right here. Her cheekbone comes in through here just ever so slightly. I have it in a little dark right there. We can lighten it up. Squinting down, doing a great job. You know, try to, you know, when I'm working with models, engage them. You know, they, um, it's important that they stay animated through the piece, you know, we can, it's easy to, you know, so, you know, engage them in dialogue and, um, but honestly, folks, there is nothing that beats working with from life. Um, you know, I am so grateful for uh, the tutelage that I received. Um, certainly Richard Schmidt was so kind and so generous in taking a number of us under his wing uh, years and years ago, um, and his import, his stressing the importance of working from life is stuck with me. You know, there's no way to get the feeling, um, you know, that you can from life. You know, I do work from photographs, as you know, a lot of people do, and what um, you just have. But my, I guess, my point is, work from life enough so that the spirit that you can build within that carries through into what you're doing with a photograph. So, you know, if I have to work from a photograph, I always do studies from life if I can. So um, really important to mention. So squinting down again, okay, do I have the contrast of edge that I saw originally? I want to build that in. You know, this is this razor sharp edge right here. Again, I mentioned it several times earlier, but I want, you know, and when I say razor sharp, it has got to be razor sharp, not kind of sharp, but to, to get the, the real contrast from, it looks like you take a scissors and cut that out and paste it on another. That's the sharpness that you need to, 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 uh, to achieve that sharp edge. So squinting down, sharp edge, soft transition. This just melts into here. The tone on her nose just kind of, it, again, this, this is a vaporously soft transition right through there. Um, this is soft through here. Sharper edge right down there. Uh, 
Absolutely. A plus there, Sion. Sion just strives to do well at whatever she does. It's been just great to, to uh, see her striving for the best. Squinting down. Simple shape here. This is There's a core shadow right here. Squinting down, how can these tones bleed and melt together here? A little strong. Boy, I'm used to having people ask me questions. <laughs> well, I'll encourage everybody to ask some questions. Uh, somebody said they thought uh, that the, the shadow under the nose might be too dark. What do you, uh, what, what's your thinking behind it? That's a good point. I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the, the feedback. Here's what I would say that, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily too dark. The edges might be too sharp on it right now. I think that is the, a bigger problem than because here's how I know that because when I squint down, the darkest darks are up in her hair and and really I don't have this quite as dark as it. Now it may show that on the camera, but this is slightly lighter than what this is. But you know, um, you have to start with. Let me just show you what I mean by the edge work. Let me try to just soften this out a little bit. Let's take, take a. a dry brush and just by softening that that might be that might give me what i need more than uh value reduction at this point i having said that i am not above reproach i <laughs> i make mistakes um do it all the time as a matter of fact it's interesting even in teaching our kids you know, sometimes in teaching a child and they're reticent to take instruction or think that I'm criticizing them, you know, I, I say to them, one of the analogies that I've tried to use over the years is, you know, just because you made a mistake doesn't mean that's the end of the world. Do you know how many mistakes I make each day when I'm painting? Basically, at the beginning of a painting, you know, you, you, we try our best to put the, the, the strokes in as accurately and cleanly as we can. But they're gonna be, there's gonna be a lot of them in the wrong spot. So as you saw, you know, I'm just adjusting things here continually as I go along. And um, anyway, that was a little bit of a digression, but it softens out right through there. Okay, there's a question that says, what makes Dan decide to do a drawing versus a painting? Does he do a sketch before each painting? Good question. Uh, the reason I chose a drawing today is because I have 35 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I will be doing a painting for the Realism Live. So you can see a start to finish um, product in there. And... Um, as well as my t new teaching materials as well. You'll see start to finish with endless discussion and um, explanation as to what I'm thinking about all the while I go through it. What was the second part of the question, Eric? I'm sorry. Uh, why not Why not just a painting? But you explained that. Okay. Okay. Ready, see him? Keep the highlights to an absolute minimum. Um, Why? Because they, you can just you can the the 
figures can take on a real waxy look. If you um, if you squint again, it's 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 all about what you're seeing in the squint. If you see it in the squint, then you have permission basically to put it down. If it dissolves into the background or that highlight just basically goes away, you're not doing yourself a favor by putting it in otherwise. It's almost like um, you're just adding too much. Um, it's like putting the shutters on the house before the foundation is done. And um, so. Somebody asked if you do a sketch before every painting. That was the, the other part. I uh, the, the answer is not necessarily. I do when I have a very complicated light situation. Sometimes when I'm developing a piece from studies or, you know, having to kind of transpose the whole scene, then I'll do a, 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 a color study. I won't necessarily do drawings of what I'm seeing, but I will do a color study just to organize my thinking and can make you move sure. the camera just a touch so we can see Simone. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, what I'm doing, I'm just I'm continuing to develop the tones here. There's obviously a lot that has to be done yet, but um, getting started, you know, really what, what I'm thinking about now is, is um, her skull, you know, if you, if you were to just envision an egg up here, the lightest light is hitting right here. And all the rest of this light is just wrapping around. So all of this has got to be knocked. None of the values back here are as light as it is right through here. So, you know, basically what I need to do is continue to build and roll these forms so that um, I create that spherical quality. Very lightly just touching the surface. Again, all of this just at, when I squinted down just now, all of this melts into these darker tones here. There's a, a value that comes through right here that creates that form. If you do a sketch from um, uh, before your painting, uh, you paint right over the sketch. Yes, if I'm using, char I use vine charcoal when I'm developing a painting, uh, when, I, when I'm drawing in a painting. And again, this will be evident on the Realism Live and, and certainly in my materials. Um, yeah, so I, I start with a, a piece of vine charcoal and then um, build with that and then paint right on top of that. I, I, I've, you know, done a lot of studying of, of other artist technique, techniques and, and, you know, Basically, why I started doing that is because it, you know, as I mentioned about the juggling the balls, there's a lot of things to think about right at the beginning. And if I can get the drawing down um, to where it needs to be early on, um, then I can place my darks, then I can worry about edges and values. Um, and certainly you're thinking about. Uh, placement and drawing with every brush stroke really but but by and large a lot of it is solved already and i don't have to um then i can spend a little bit more energy on value control and edge control which are also really key items you know um one of the biggest questions i get asked by people is how do you capture light in your paintings dan i love the way that you've captured light how do you do it you know again um by isolating these in the in the series that i'm developing i'm showing you through edges and through values um how important it is to get those right and and then showing you exactly what i mean by that um there's a you know a specific way to look at the subject in the deep squint that really helps and enables you to get an accurate read on things right off the bat. And if you don't kind of get that right, um, it can kind of hamstring you right from the start. Do so you paint right over your charcoal is a question. I, I do. Yeah. I, and again, uh, vine charcoal, you have to, you can't use a charcoal pencil 
or compressed charcoal because compressed charcoal will kind of bleed through the paint, but vine charcoal seems to almost um, melt underneath the paint. It, it so just, you, don't, you don't have to spray it or anything? No, I don't spray it. I just paint right on top of it. And uh, what, what I do, you know, so if, if I'm putting a line down and it's this, I don't have a, a you know, my, my drawing lines are like this line. They're very thin, light, and if they're, if they're too heavy, I'll even just kind of wipe them off a little bit with a rag just so I have a faint guide so that when I get back in there, I can cut them in. When I place my darks with paint so that they can be placed accurately and I'm not chasing my drawing around for the rest of the day. Uh, so so that's, that's why I do it. Um, you know, it's not a put a drawing down and then paint by number. That's not the idea. But the, the, you know, the idea is to put it down so that when I mix, I'm laying in my key dark, say I'm mixing these darks here in paint, now I, when I get the drawing, and then I, it, I should mention also on the drawing, you'll see on, on the other materials that it's not, I don't, I don't put tone on it, it's just line. So I can then come in with the paint and put my shadows in the paint and I make, be assured that they're gonna be in the right spot to start with. So that's kind of the idea. Excellent. All right, you got about uh, six or seven minutes left. Okay. And we want to save some time so you can show us that beautiful studio. Okie dokie. Um, <laughs> oh, you don't have to, no pressure. <laughs> no, I'm happy. You know, honestly, this is not going to get finished anyway, but you guys get a pretty good idea. So here's what, here's the deal. Um, Sion is holding on. Well there, thank you, hon. Uh, you know, again, I'm not going to finish this, but you get an idea. So what have I done here? Let me just talk to what's what's going on and what my thinking is. My thinking is developing. Certainly, at the beginning, start with the simple outline. The you know the form of the skull to me, getting the the solid mass of the skull, and in right from the start so that that doesn't throw me off later on you know, or you know appear to be caved in or missing or whatever and then once i've got that down then i begin to develop you know painting same in painting same in drawing i am developing the extremes sharpest sharpest edges lightest lights darkest darks and in the painting the strongest colors getting those on the canvas as soon as possible. What those will do will be benchmarks that I compare every other decision against. If I don't have those down, I am I'm kind of like floating at sea. I don't know quite where things are going. And um, sometimes what I'll even do on my paintings, I'll put a swatch of black and a swatch of white. Uh, I, I often have a tone canvas, black, white, so that I can, just physically having the white and the black up on the canvas lets me, um, it basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of a governor. So I now know, here's this end, here's this end. Where does this value fall compared to that? Where's the lightest light compared to that? So I can then, you know, all of this is, is a constant comparison from one thing to the next, one shape, one form, one value, one color. How does this compare to that? Uh, so, you know, so that's really the key. Sion, can you give me about a minute? What do we have, about a minute here? Let, yeah, you got yeah. another minute. And could you address the placement of the image in the canvas? Because I think that's so important because you've got a, a really nice space of error there. Yeah, thank you. Oh, um, you know, Generally speaking, you know, this is a piece of paper. I may, if I were to frame this, I would probably frame it so that there's more space in front of her face rather than behind. Unless you, you know, want to create some tension in the piece, then you would, might frame it the other way. You know, it just kind of depends on what your preference is on that. Um, so, um, again, let's see, see on another 30 seconds here and we'll call it quits. Spin your head away. Uh, there you go. Right there. Go ahead.
on the web store. Edges, this is gonna bleed out right here. I still have a tune too large. Can we get a little tighter in on that uh, that drawing, please? Certainly. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Oh yeah, that's so beautiful. So yeah, it's you know it's got a long way to go, but it's it's getting there. And like I said, I I have to just bring this in a little bit more again. Your daughter is beautiful. She is beautiful inside and out. All right, folks. Well, thank you very much for your time today. I it was a privilege to work with all of you, and um. Okay, Dan, can we see your studio? I'd be happy to. Well, first off, let's go back to Simone, and, and we all want to give her thumbs up yep. and applause. <laughs> Sion. Oh, Sion. I'm sorry. Sion. Sion. All right, Sion. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> She's, she, she talks a lot, actually. Um, anyway, uh, let's yeah, I'll just give you the 30-second tour here. Let's, where are we? Okay, so... Um, yeah, just, uh, thankfully, um, I've been blessed to work in this space for many years and I was built in 95 and so, you know, just, um, basically here's what we're talking about. It's North light. So we've got North windows up here, some fluorescent lights below it. So, and LEDs so that when the Light fades in the winter, you know, it's three o'clock in the afternoon and we're out of light. And um, so I have to, um, so. And how do, how do you color balance that light so that you're getting the, uh, the same temperature? Uh, making sure that I have full spectrum lights in, you know, um, color corrected, you know, most light manufacturers have what's called a CRI on the bulbs color rendering color rendering index if that's in the mid 90s then you're in pretty good shape a lot of the leds um are are good as well just in terms of um you know ba basically if it says full spectrum that's that's a good sign so right. a high cri number full spectrum bulbs work um okay. so all right well, terrific. Dan, thank you so much. This has been fabulous having you on today. We're all very impressed with with this gift that you've been given to be able to do something so beautiful in such a short amount of time. Eric, thank you for the opportunity. It's great to work with all of you, and I wish all of you the best and stay wanna, well. Thank you. I want to remind everyone that uh, Dan's got a new course coming up, and, and you'll be able to find it at danielgerharts.com. And uh, just check it out. It'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. And we want to support him. We want to support all the artists in the world. This is this is a time we all need to be working together and, and helping one another. And that's what this show is about. So, Dan, thank you. Thank and, you for uh, your generosity. We, we and will that. see you on Realism Live. And uh, this has been terrific.